Hey guys, I was just sent this to me for review. So you're gonna watch this. Let's get to it. Welcome back to the Joe Jaguar City Smartphone Astronomy. So first, because I'm doing a review for SV Boney, they sent me this telescope and I am not getting paid uh, from them whatsoever, I'm not getting any money. And I can talk about how I really feel about the telescope so they're not gonna influence me on the review. So I've heard of the name brand SV Boney, I would guess, you know, about five years ago, and they're, you know, started promoting their astronomical equipment and accessories. So I've been watching them for a few years. First thing, the one thing I like about SV Boney is that they actually tell you what glass that they're using in their telescope. So I like the fact that they tell me what it is. It's like buying a car. I want to know what type of motor I have. And it doesn't mean here, you know, this is a doublet with a 51 glass. Now that doesn't mean it's going to be bad quality. If you use even a 51 glass, it's not the end of the story. It's not the whole story. It depends on how well you make the glass, how well you polish it and figure it. Then is what mating glass have you used to, to mate with it? There's a lot of things that, you know, in the design of it. It could be a very thin airspace glass. It could be medium or a big airspace glass. So there's many factors that go. It's not just what glass you're using. It also depends on how long you make the telescope. The longer you make a telescope, of course, the more it's going to correct for the chromatic aberration. Okay. So again, it's not all about what glass they're using. But I'm glad that they at least tell me, hey, it's a doublet, 51, it's advertised, and they're not hiding it, okay? Okay, so now that we got all that out of the way, let's take a look at what this is. Okay, so it's an 80 millimeter ED, again, 51 glass. So here is the specs. Here you go. There's the glass. Hopefully you can see it. It's a 80 millimeter, which is a 3.1 inch, okay, and it's F7, so it's not too long and it's not too short. Some of you that are brand new are probably wondering, what does the F mean? Focal ratio, okay, we know that it's 80 millimeter, which is diameter, it says F7, so, which means if that lens is 80 millimeters, if you go seven times, that's the focal length of this telescope. Now you might say, well, how can that be seven times? Because the focus point is not right here. You have to normally add a diagonal and then an eyepiece. So seven times will actually come up this way. Does that make sense? But that's how they normally do it on every telescope. Okay, the coatings look really nice, a nice dark green, as you guys saw. It has a few baffles in there. It looks like three baffles. So which means that will cut down on stray light and reflections. I like these thumb screws here. They're nice and big. So even if you have gloves on type of thing, you can easily open and close them. The rings are kind of like medium duty. They look adequate for an 80 millimeter telescope. Now, it does have a Vixen bar, which is kind of standard these days. Now that looks like it's about six inches to me, which is probably fine because when you close this dew shield here, you only have that much space. Now, maybe you can squeeze an eight inch if you really wanted to, but that's six inches probably good enough. You guys can put longer if you'd like. Now it does come with a, this button here. This is a fully rotatable focuser. Some people, it's not really needed, but it's just nice to have. Also sliding dew cap. And what's nice here is it has a little thumb screw. Now, why is that a decent thing? Because two here, three. So there's three screws that you can put a little less friction or more friction. 
has a little protector for the focuser. So this is a two inch focuser, standard. It does have a dual speed, which that's the main focus, the black one or that black one. And then this gold one is the slow motion or fine focus. And then has an inch and a quarter adapter. You can put either an inch and a quarter diagonal or a two inch diagonal here with a two inch eyepiece. And you can get really big wide field of views for things like the North American Nebula, the Plady Star Cluster, Andromeda Galaxy, and a few others. I like how this cap is not too tight and it's not too loose. And it's also metal and not plastic. Okay guys, going back to the lens part here. Now, SV Boney uses a mating element that is lithanium. I hope I'm saying it right. I think that whoever used it before me probably is an imager. And because when I racked it in and out, there was a humming noise, almost like a little scratching noise, like zoom. Now, I just adjusted everything. I just loosened a couple of these uh, screws that are underneath because what I think is, if it was an imager that used it before me, they probably tightened it down because most imagers, you know, they they got a big camera on here. They, they might have a filter wheel and they might have a guide scope or whatever type of thing. So it's probably very heavy. So they had it tightened down. So just by racking it, it was making a little bit of humming noise. I don't think there was anything wrong, but it just was, you know, touching. There was more contact and you can just hear it move in and out. Now that I loosened it, it's a bit softer and I don't see anything wrong. Now there is a little friction on here. I'm talking about no feather touch or moonlight focuser. And this price range, you know, this is a lot better again so i'm going to compare again to the evo star uh, focusers this is i think a big improvement uh, being that it first of all i like look how big that is now i've tested other focusers where sometimes they have uh you know like maybe a two inch rack and pinion and then it might have an extender built in but this one looks like it's about at least four, four and a half inch extension. And there is no play to me. There is no movement, no. Um, so I actually like it, you, you should not run out of room. And it's also, I like rack and pinion a little bit better, I think, uh, my personal taste over the Crayford. And the reason is a good Crayford is good, but the entry level Crayfords like the GSOs, the Scope stuff, and other manufacturers, Skywatcher branded ones, they, they slip a lot. So once you put a two inch diagonal, once you put a two inch eyepiece, it's gonna slip. So I like the rack and pinion, just because once teeth engage, it locks it more and there's less slippage and it can hold a bigger uh, weight. Also, what I like, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, the teeth, are actually on a diagonal slightly which is better than the teeth being up and down or horizontal just because if you have a little weight on it it's very easy for it to just slip on the teeth or if it's on a 45 degree angle it's holding it a little bit better hard to explain hopefully that kind of showed you a little bit so i think the focuser is a much better improvement uh, than the evo star so overall, I think this is a plus. And by the way, guys, we are talking about this guy in Canada in retail. We're talking about very, this is a very good price. In fact, this is almost such a good price that I'm not even sure that you should even consider an Acromat telescope anymore. For this price, again, if we compare it to the Evo Star, I believe it's about fourteen fifty for the eighty millimeter version. So we're com comparing uh, eighty millimeter version fourteen fifty versus five five hundred dollars, right? But will it perform? I mean, it still has better features. The sliding dew cap, the rings are slightly better. I mean, it's not as thin as the Skywatcher rings. Bigger 
nuts on here. It has some holes here so you can put some added little guiding telescope, a finder scope up there, you know, whatever you want type of thing. Dual speed focuser, that's not a cheapy one. This is kind of like a medium one, rotatable focuser and notched uh, as well. So there's a lot of good features in here for, and I remember uh, US would be even cheaper. You guys are, you know, retired on a fixed uh, income uh, or on a low income, then maybe those people might still can only afford an 80 millimeter Acromat. But if you're not in any of those three categories, retired in disability, or a fixed income, then you should, if you're gonna go for like an 80 millimeter, even 90 millimeter, you might as well go for something like this that has all the features for this price. It's just, I think, amazing price. And I'm not just saying that, but you know, I have owned the Evo Star 80, 100, 120, 150, I've owned them all. I know what you get for the price, and that's why it's three times the cost. Will this be the new entry standard of you know people getting into hobby will this now be the standard telescope now that people are going to get i have always said if you guys buy a refractor forget about like the 50 60 millimeter size the only thing you're going to see there is the moon and a couple planets okay i always say get into at least the 80 millimeter to the 102 millimeter if you could afford it okay so this is going to be the size that you need and I know too, some of you guys are on fixed incomes. You know, you gotta buy the mount and tripod and all that. That's why if you're not in a fixed income, forget about the Acromat and just go directly to this. Because an F7 with an ED glass is actually comparable to something that's a minimum F12, F13 at least, okay? But you're getting the portability and all the features uh, as what I'm showing here. Remember too, even a 102 millimeter, let's say a four inch Acromat refractor normally, you know, does not come with a sliding dew cap, does not come with a dual speed focuser and all a rotatable focuser. It doesn't come with any of those features. And you're saving a little bit, but if you go that route and then you just change the focuser, the cheap focusers, the entry level focusers are Canadian, because that's where I live, is you know about 230 to 40 bucks for the entry ones. It's not even this kind of class where it's kind of like a medium. You know, you're looking at at least 300. So if you get an Acromat and you replace the, just a focuser, you've already gone to this price range anyway. So you might as well just buy it to begin with. I will see you guys on the next video, which is actually, I'm going to mount this guy. We're gonna go outside. We're gonna first look at some daytime stuff then I might look at the sun if I or filter fit in here. We'll take a peek at the sun. And then we're gonna look at some nighttime stuff. See how it performs. So far to me, it looks good, especially for the amount of money you're paying for. It's almost a no brainer. But let's see how it performs before I give it the final two thumbs up. Everything to me looks like it's a winner. So let's go test it out. I'll see you on the next video. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe. If you know anybody getting in the hobby, share my link. If you guys are on the forums and maybe somebody's asked about this guy, then I will say, hey, yeah, exactly. You can say, hey, Joe's tested it already. Why not look at his video? I will see you guys next time. Why not you? Why not me?